Throughout his time, Professor Layton has invented a lot of unique and innovative inventions. From a machine gun out of gambling machine parts, to a helicopter made out of things found in the shed, the man's quick thinking and resourcefulness have gotten him and many others out of all sorts of situations. But today, we're going to be looking at one of the Professor's earliest inventions. Well, at least in terms of game release, as we take a look at the perplexing paraglider puzzle from Curious Village. Quick disclaimer, a lot of the data in this episode is based upon assumption, such as Leighton's weight, the weight of a piece of string, uh, just generally different weights. Without any further ado, let's crack this case. The first port of call to solving this mystery was to look at how tall the tower is, so we can see how far Leighton and Flora would have travelled upon their launch from the balcony. Rather annoyingly, Level 5 have never actually given an exact height for any of the characters in the games, let alone the buildings, so this would have to involve a little bit of investigation. The best way we can solve this is to look at this image of the tower's entrance. It's the only clear image that shows part of the tower from the ground exactly. If we take the front doors of the tower and assume they're the average height of UK doors, we get a height of 6 foot 2 inches, or 71.7 inches, approximately. We can use this height to calculate the height of the tower up to this top window, and the reason we're going to this window here is because this is something that can be seen in the full map of the building, which we'll be using later on to calculate the full height of the tower's balcony. Looking at the map, it's a little unclear to see where this part of the roof starts, so by using the window we can line up these two points in each of the images. The door to the tower fits into this space 4.578 times, and so if we times that number by the height of the door in inches, we get 328.24, about 27 feet and 4 inches making this part of the tower already taller than the average UK home. We can now take this information over to the official game map and see how tall the balcony is. The space we currently have measurements for fits into the full map of the tower 5.682 times. If we times this amount by 328.24, the inches tall the space is, we get a total of 1865.06, 155 feet and 5 inches, just short of two Buckingham palaces on top of each other. Now imagine seeing that as you walk down the mall. Now we've got the height that Leighton and Flora start from, we need to understand how hang gliders work to keep the pilot in the air. And as someone who's never used a hang glider but does have a connection to the internet, here's how I think it works. The average hang glider will weigh somewhere around 35 kilograms for more professional models and 25 to 30 kilograms for more simpler models. For a glider to stay up in the air, the curve on the top must be greater than the curve on the base, creating a high pressure underneath, pushing the glider up. The glider will stay up in the air by riding on the wind, caused by ridges where the air is pushed up against a surface, such as a mountain or hill, or by using thermal patches where cold air is forcing nearby hot air to rise higher. Which is a bit more dumbed down, but you know, this is dearest Herschel. A glider is also streamlined to be as lightweight as possible and prevent any drag in the air, and all elements have to be fastened in tightly and properly to prevent the glider falling apart mid-flight. Which is obviously something you don't want. When in flight, a glider will fall at about one meter a second, so it's important to always be looking for ways to stay up. And finally, it's important that anyone flying is tied in with a harness, as the high wind speeds will force anyone not attached to the glider to instantly fall off. Which doesn't exactly set up a fair fight for Leighton's glider. While it is pretty clear to see in the cutscene, we can also consult the world of Professor Leighton for a detailed view of the glider's structure. It's made up of various parts that art director John Suzuki thought could be found in a girl's bedroom such as curtains, string, a chair, and you know, a, a huge-ass globe. The glider is constructed from two curtain rails, tied to the globe's ring with bits of string and lace, and piloted from a rickety rocking chair which is tied on with some rope. How convenient. Already the weight of this is looking pretty hefty, but when we add on the weight of both Leighton and Flora, we've got an estimated total of 170.24 kilograms. And with something that large and heavy, the bigger mystery is how Leighton even got it out onto the balcony. Still, Leighton and Flora managed to take a running start and launch off the platform into the skies above St. Mystere. Now, we're talking about a 170 kilogram glider made from various antiques launching from a small courtyard 155 feet in the air. Well, given the weight of the makeshift glider, Leighton and Flora would pretty much immediately plummet to the ground with a velocity of 30.462 meters a second, hitting the ground with an impact force of 789,891.26 newtons. Ow. Even if the upward wind was so strong that Leighton and Flora were able to stay in the air, without a harness the pair would instantly be blown away. 
the collapsing of the sail upon colliding with Don Paolo's helicopter would cause them to spin out of control and fall, and even if somehow, through some miracle of the Azran, Leighton managed to get all the way down to the village square, a jump from this height would undoubtedly shatter more than a few bones. With the amount of items in Flora's room, Leighton would have been much wiser to use the wood to simply build a bridge over this gap and continue running down the tower with Luke, who quite miraculously also managed to escape an incredibly unstable architectural nightmare collapsing into the ground. Honestly, Baron Reinhold must have been paying a pretty penny or two to convince someone to build that. It's amazing that the collapsing of the tower doesn't actually just take out half the village. Within just two days of them arriving, Leighton and Luke have caused so much carnage that a historic landmark and a beautiful park now lay in ruins while they run off back to London and leave the residents to deal with it who, need I say, are cut off from the rest of the world by a river surrounding their village. Whew. So in short, Leighton is a god, antiques don't really make for great vehicles of flight, and that right there is another puzzle solved. <laughs>